Why should we be interested in creating a watershed plan for Joe Davis County? A planning process is a time to gather and evaluate available information. It's a time to build consensus around ideas, set goals, and come up with projects that will help us to meet those goals. Planning is an opportunity to consider our time, energy, and money resources, and to target the projects we feel are the best use of those resources. Planning is a time to pause and reflect. And with watershed planning, our reflections will be focused on water. But why? One good reason is that our bodies can't function without it. It's said that a person can live seven weeks without food, but only seven days without water. The adult human body is composed of something like 50 to 75% water. A newborn baby is 80% water. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. We're dependent on water to survive, but because of its apparent abundance, we tend to take it for granted. But the supply of drinkable water is limited. Of the water on Earth, only about 3% is fresh water. The League of Women Voters of Joe Davis County hosted a forum, The Land and Water Beneath Us. At the forum, one presenter suggested that we could decide not to worry about water contamination issues at all and simply choose to treat our water for drinking. But water treatment can be expensive. This is a rendering of a desalinization plant in Carlsbad, California. It's being built at a cost of $1 billion. It's hard to imagine us being forced to rely on salt water for our drinking supply because we have a relatively abundant supply of fresh water in the Midwest. The Mississippi River watershed drains over 40% of the contiguous United States, and more than 50 cities rely on it now for their water supply. The Great Lakes contain 20% of the Earth's fresh water supply. In the 1980s, there were proposals made to pipe Great Lakes water to the southwest, but these were dismissed due to the costliness, difficult logistics, and strong objections from Great Lakes states. Piping water long distance may seem far-fetched to us, but it is being done. To our west, the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System of Pipelines is now under construction to provide water from the Missouri River to 20 communities. This project is behind schedule and over budget. In the long term, our water supply will be affected by others as well as by our own actions. To our east, for example, McHenry County's water supply is being impacted by the drawdown resulting from pumping in the Joliet area. McHenry County recently completed an extensive project to document water availability relative to historical levels and also created a computer hydrology model to allow them to predict impacts of future use. They will simulate different options for groundwater development and use the models to help them make decisions about where and how much they pump to ensure an economically sustainable water supply well into the future. If we agree with Ben Franklin, we may want to understand and evaluate the quantity of water we use, as well as our activities that may affect water quality. The steep slopes in Joe Davis County make stormwater management difficult. The county's 2013 Hazards Mitigation Plan notes that severe storms are the most frequently occurring natural hazard in the county. The flash flooding event in July of 2011 caused significant and devastating damage. Over 20 inches of rain fell within an 18-hour period, resulting in the loss of two lives and over $8 million in property damage. By managing stormwater runoff, we can reduce contaminants polluting our waterways, soil erosion, and in large storm events, infrastructure damage and loss of life. Are there things we can do to reduce the negative effects of droughts like that experienced in 2012? Surface water can contaminate groundwater, Abandoned wells and mines, sinkholes and bedrock fractures can provide direct conduits from the surface to groundwater supplies. Joe Davis County has two Superfund sites known to affect water quality, a portion of the Savannah Army Depot and the Bouch Gray Mine. Lakes and rivers that don't meet water quality standards for basic uses, including aquatic life, public water supply, swimming, recreation, fish consumption, and or aesthetic quality are considered impaired. Joe Davis County has several impaired water bodies, shown here in red. The EPA is now setting total maximum daily loads for impaired segments of the Galena and Cincinnati rivers and for Frentress Lake. 
In addition to the County Hazards Mitigation Plan, Joe Davis County's Comprehensive Plan identifies the need to address water resource issues. Whether we become knowledgeable and proactive about our water issues or not, our area may be affected by others who feel this is important. For example, Illinois is now completing its Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy with a goal of reducing the amounts of nitrate and phosphorus lost through drainage into the Mississippi River by 45%. A regional water supply planning effort for the Rock River region is being initiated that will include our area. We may want to understand and possibly become engaged in these types of efforts. Finally, some actions that need to be taken to protect our water resources will likely require money. It's generally easier to obtain funding for projects that have been included in a plan that documents consensus. Building consensus is also important for the implementation of the plan. Over the past year and a half, we've been approaching the planning process through the idea of science-based stewardship. By coming to consensus about the known facts about water issues in our area, we'll improve our chances of collaborating to steward this important resource. These are some of the reasons it may be important for us to create a watershed plan for Joe Davis County. What do you think?